Welcome again to a highly questionable extravaganza. What do you like today, Bo? The medical expertise of Jim Hersey, because we all go to Jim Hersey for medical expertise. Vamos, papi. Is Russell Westbrook putting up important stats or just fun ones? This is not an either or question. This is an and question. Important and fun. Keep in mind, last night, seventh triple double in March. That's the most since Michael in a month. He's probably going to break that because he's gathering triple doubles, collecting them. And also, most triple doubles since Magic Johnson in a season, 17. Keep in mind, I'm willing to say this without dilution. Across all of sports, not just in this sport, Russell Westbrook is the most athletic person anywhere in sports. It's also worth noting they're undefeated in the games where he's racked up triple doubles. So it's not as though he's getting these at the expense of the larger operation, right? So I don't see how you can make the argument that what he's doing is just racking up silly stats. The Tom Haverstraw of ESPN rolls out some interesting stats that point out if you look at it at a per possession basis, what he's doing is more impressive than the Oscar Robertson triple-double season. That if the current basketball was played at the pace the basketball was played then, Russell Westbrook will be putting up a triple-double that will put what Oscar Robertson did to shame. What are you looking at? Well, I know that he has 16 triple-doubles, but I'm trying to find out how many rings he has. Okay, great, puppy. Huh? There it is. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's all this thing about uh, yeah. Russell Westbrook. Everybody's yeah. talking about his triple-double, yeah. yeah. you know. <laughs> Both of us work so hard so we can come to work every day with that guy. Yeah, there it what is, guy? Right there. He's that got a guy. complete list of all his rings right there. That's an important number. A big zero. All right. This big there zero. It is. LeBron has two. <laughs> that looked like LeBron a three. That right. looked like a three, didn't it? Is Carmelo right that the little kid running on the court is a security issue? I mean, we have one of those heartwarming moments that you really only get out of NBA games. Look at this. We have an adorable child. He just wants to come hug Melo. Yes. And so he runs straight onto the floor and hugs Melo. Yeah, uh, Melo took the charge there. Hey, look, Melo indulged his little fellow, tussles his hair. Uh huh. That ridiculous millennial haircut. Here he goes, running back to whoever that is with him, by the way, who got out of there quickly. After the game, though, Melo did say it's a bit of a security risk, and he's kind of right. I mean, you have to make that argument. Granted, it is a small, adorable child who went out there for benign reasons. However, that's still somebody who's not supposed to be able to get that far. Where was security? He's not kind of right. He's absolutely right, and the director of security absolutely would not be quoted. Declined comment. But this is proof positive, ladies and gentlemen, because we just showed you the adorable video. The Knicks will ruin anything. Like, we didn't celebrate this at all. That was great video. The Knicks ruined that, too. Well, one, if everyone in that stadium was wearing the electronic dog colors, you know, that wouldn't have happened. I mean, my father's right. He's been trying to espouse this. He's been trying to get this idea off the ground for about four or five years, the idea of everybody wearing electronic dog colors so nobody rushes the court. I mean, he's right. It seems impractical. Philosophical quandary. If the dog collar is on a human, is it still a dog collar? <laughs> Did Jim Mersey comparing the dangers of football-related concussions to taking aspirin make even a little sense to you? Well, it makes sense from this perspective. All of these owners are going to protect their money and their sport, however it is that they can protect their money in the sport. I'd be fascinated if one guy with all of these liability issues would actually put his name and his voice on you know what? I do believe that our sport causes concussions, but instead they're all going to lie to our faces and they're all going to make it seem like they're not rationalizing away their greed when that's all they're doing. I'm not sure that Ursay is lying. I think he actually believes this because once again, it's Jim Ursay. Understand, the man <laughs> said that playing football is a lot like taking aspirin. Some people take aspirin and it doesn't harm them. Some people take aspirin and it does harm them. What? are you talking about right now and you can't you right. cannot you be the yes, guy yes. talking about pharmaceuticals yes. in your reference to what football yes. is come on man yeah. fair for the woman basketball coach of Perry View A&M to be fired for suspending two of her players that they were dating okay Dawn Brown was the coach at Prairie View A&M she has been fired the reason that she was fired was a title nine violation the title nine violation as alleged is that she had a rule on the books that said that her players could not date each other or date coaches or date administrators. Now, is that a violation? This is the new world that we are in because these are things that we had not previously considered because your default thought was, hey, they're on the same team, they're of the same gender, they're not going to be dating. 
But now you're in this situation. You can understand why a coach would have such a rule, not because of what goes on when they're dating, but what happens after they're not dating anymore. But I don't know what I'm supposed to make of the, the legalities of it. This is the new world order for us, and these are the sorts of questions we have to start learning how to answer. The spirit of the rule makes sense when you consider what Bomani is saying here. This doesn't feel like a fireable offense, given that you don't want players dating each other, not for while they're dating, after dating. And this rule was put in place really to protect coaches and players from dating, which I think we can all agree you don't really want that one in your locker room either. So I don't think it's a fireable offense, but the legality of it makes it difficult because Title IX is difficult to go through all of the minutia and try and figure out whether this was legal or not. Do you agree that Montrez Cyril's shove of a ref was deliberate assault and battery? Montrez is his name. There's an L at the there end. Is the, there is an L, a Z and an L at the end. Okay. Uh, the referees union came out very strong again, said, uh, said assault and battery for this. Look at this here. Is this assault and battery to you? He's already frustrated. He's emotional. Yeah. How weak is it he throws the ref down and then Burton number four is right there. He didn't do a thing to him. Yeah. Uh, well, but I mean, this is an assault and battery. This is ridiculous. It's, you can't do that. You can't do that, but it's not assault and battery. Oh, no. The statement is absolutely absurd. They took a common playbook to make that statement, the referees union. Everything's out of control. If you don't give a multiple game suspension here, they're going to take the whole thing over. As if there was any doubt whatsoever that he was going to get a multiple game suspension. That's something that you cannot do like there's no defense anywhere for that but you throw an official to the ground you're gonna get part for a while i don't care if it's the d league or the y league i think that the ref made a mistake there you know he he made a cardinal sin you know i mean if there's going to be a fight in that court you don't get between the two guys that are fighting you gotta stay away from it or grab one of them by the back well, the moment you get in between one of them you, you run the risk of getting pushed to the uh, to the floor that's it that's it spoken like a lifetime coward He's right, though. Breaking up fights, most overrated thing going. That's a great way to get a bottle bust over your head. It actually could have gone a lot worse for the zebra. I think he was flopping. Let's see. Was that a flop? Let's see that again. Floppery? Yeah, that's not flop. No, it's like, not That floppy. is not a flop. No, that was, I mean, but he did get some extra push in there to make <laughs> sure he went down. Coming up next on my son Stevie show, we talk to Adam Jones. I'm a nice looking guy, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's his romantic side. side. The romantic just show side it up. I look good naked, <laughs> I think is up. what he's saying. I show up and I look good physically. Johnny knows at the beach today is Adam Jones. Can't believe he's still in the league, Bomani. He's still in the league. He used to be Pac Man Jones. He's now, he's, now he's Adam Jones, and he's about to get paid. Let's talk to him a little bit. Adam, if someone doesn't know you and you had to explain to them what your childhood was like, what would you tell them? Um, inner city, typical childhood. Uh, it was really rough. I grew up in an um, uh, inner city called Bankhead Court. Um, moved from there to a place called Bow Rock. Um, it was rough, man. It, it, I wouldn't say any typical inner city projects, but um, it was rough. Um, my father got killed when I was eight years old um, in Bankhead Court. Then I moved to Bow Rock. But... Uh, it's typical, man. Growing up as, as a kid in the hood, when you look back at it, it, it was just normal life then, but now you look back like, whoa. Um, it was like war in the neighborhood. <laughs> so you get to the league, how ready were you or not ready were you? Like, what were I, some of the things that surprised you? I wasn't ready at all, man, tell you the honest God truth. I've never had a bank account card until I made the league, you know. Um, 20 years old, they give you a card, say, hey, man, here, you can buy anything you want. What? Buy anything I want? Oh my God! You tell a kid that twenty years old coming out of college, that never had a bank card. Well, so in between Boat Rock and the league, you went to West Virginia. Like, what was that transition going from Southwest Atlanta to going to Morgantown, West Virginia? Uh, it was a big culture change, <laughs> uh, shock, I should say. Um, been, been, I've, I've, I've been in the inner city all, all my whole life. I probably had two, two out of. 17, 1800 kids that was all African American and um, going to West Virginia and it's only about a hundred of you guys, a hundred African Americans there um, away from home, 
you know, your first time. For me, it was my first time ever having my own room. Can you explain to us what rock bottom looked like for you? Because uh, it's kind of stunning that you're still in the league. I don't know if it stuns you at all, but the idea that you've made it this far along the path to this point in the journey, what would you point to and say, that was rock bottom? Um, the whole My whole situation was pretty much rock bottom at the uh, well, really, before I went to Dallas, because I didn't understand the process that Jerry was trying to explain to me. Um, this is one of them, one of them, them deep circle. I mean, one of them, them dark nights, man, when you have nobody to call on, man, and, and you got to dig down deep and um, really want to change and really want to do something. You know, um, like I said, I, I've had a lot of time to, to work on the things that I need to work on. And my, my point to the younger guys, like, y'all ain't going to get this much time that I had. I'm the last one that um, that, that was able to to go through all of this and still get it get it right, you know. Um, I don't think the commissioner is going to allow anybody to make as many mistakes as I did. And uh, I don't take it for granted. Um, I visit my past all the time um, just so I don't go back down that road. Um, um, but I'm content and, and eager as a person now. Um, um, of who I am. When did the light go off for you? Um, I would say about three and a half years ago, um, four, when, when it really went off. Um, when my little girl was born, she was born, my wife's um, water broke at 23 weeks, and my um, my youngest daughter was born at 24 weeks. And um, we went through a period of time where I, mentally I wasn't there. I was going up and down just because of I couldn't do nothing to help her. And um, a good friend of mine and my wife, we got together. We, I got with some people that I can talk to. And uh, I just told myself from this day forward, I would not, I promised myself that I would not let anyone get the last laugh. You know, um, you, when you're going through so much and, and when you can't do nothing about it, that was the changing point. And, and when I'm speaking about going through so much, I'm talking about my daughter. Um, I would, that really opened up my eyes, like, yo, this is the window, the window is getting small, you can't play this game forever. Do what you got to do to protect and love your family and do what you got to do to provide for them. And um, Coach Lewis brought me in and uh, he's like, look, Adam, it's your last rodeo, buddy. Either you're going to get it together or you ain't. So um, uh, I'm just so blessed and truly thankful that um, it worked out the way I wanted it to. Hold on just a second, Adam. We're going to get my father in here. Got to change the camera angle. Give us just a second. This is the only part of the interview you wanted to do anyways. We know. <laughs> nice talking to you, Adam. Nice talking What's to up, you. What's up, boss? Hey. I like your shirt. That's thank you. Nice thank shirt. you. I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Go we'll ahead, see, Bobby. man. What do um, you got for Adam Jones? What does the romantic side of Adam Jones look like? Uh-oh. What does the what? The, the romantic side of Adam Jones looks like. Oh, just a clean-cut, shaved guy like I am now, man. Um, I enjoy uh, uh, my wife and my, my family. Um, I work out hard, so I think I look pretty good, man. I'm, I'm a nice-looking guy, I guess. <laughs> the that's, that's his romantic side. side. The romantic just side is up. I look good naked, <laughs> I think up. is what he's saying. I show up and I look good physically. Thank you, Adam, for being on with us. We appreciate it, sir. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. It's always a good time. Questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that has a new vision for the show. Do you question? Thanks, Dad. You give us topics at events, we question. The hell? Do you question if this school is focused on valuable activities? Focus. Focus. We're Focus. going Focus. to the land of the rising Focus. sun. You're Focus. not helping, You're buddy. Not helping. Let's go to Japan, Focus. please. Japan. Oh, double dutch. Oh, it's like single dutch. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Whoa. Oh, they doubled down. Oh, a triple. For the rest of time. Wow. Oh man. That is amazing. Wow. 
<laughs> Do we need to say anything else? I think wow, is, uh, wow suffices. Raise your hand if you're just a little bit disappointed that there wasn't one kid a little slow on the. Uh, Come on, man! I'm just what saying. Are you doing? I'm just saying. After they what went through, after they went through all those times on the last round, we could have been rewarded by a little trippage. <laughs> Come on, man! Do you question if this is a fair way to end the game? All right, we are going to middle school basketball in Kansas. Uh, my father clearly Sounds had awful. one of these teams he bet on. Uh, one of the teams is down one. What happens here? I have money on this one. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Uh, we're counting down. That's uh oh, that should have been a game winner. And nope, the time is over. Jump ball, game over. Um, is it gonna fall eventually? No, wait, we gotta wait for it. No, it's nah, still up there. That's just, there. It is. That's that's just, just it what is. it is. And you lose, potential game winner kid on the floor. You lose. I think there's a very easy solution to this problem. Go ahead, number 32, tip the ball in and tip it out. One of the two, you got it. Nobody's stopping you. We won't call a goal, 10. <laughs> it's a heartbreaking way. That is a life lesson there, kid. Try all you want, and sometimes the ball just gets stuck up there. What the cheerleader is celebrating, anyhow? Oh, they're at that age. To yeah, at that age, yeah. they're celebrating no matter what. Yay! Woo! Yeah! I mean, that's what they're there for. You know what it is? The ref gave a thumbs up. They thought it was all good. Yes. Do you question if Antonio Brown is enjoying Hollywood? You know, he's out there cutting the rug on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, yeah, that's his thing. He got the Nino Brown thing going on Dancing with the Stars. Anyway, this is after he did his little jig on Dancing with the Stars. You're too young, too young to use cutting a rug. I mean, no one needs Whoa. coaching on sexiness. We just call that flat out delicious. Here, would you like this, my friend? Maybe not. Um, no, you're great. So the best part about this is you basically became a coach for Antonio, teaching him what, rubbing, touching? What other things did you learn this week, A.B.? Uh, to put my hips on the leg, a lot of stuff. How, how did that work out for you? Uh, it was a little difficult. Really? Why? Uh, blood flow. Yeah. Booming. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Man. Man. <laughs> That's how you parlay a Pro Bowl season right there. There you go. Good, good yeah. <laughs> How the hell did he get away with saying that on television? How are we getting away with letting him say it again? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was really good. Let's yeah. go again. Yeah. Let's go again. Yeah. <laughs> Time to play the game that is a stain on humanity. See? Oh, no. Tell us what's on television tonight. He'll always be intrigued. On ESPN2, USA and Guatemala. Yeah, man. Look, uh, we can be eliminated from World Cup play tonight by Guatemala. They, we lost to Guatemala. We, as if I play on the team. If it, can you picture me in shorts running around there, sweating 240 pounds? It's ridiculous. Landon Donovan says Jurgen Klinsman will be fired. Should be fired if they lose tonight. Let's look at the last time these two uh, teams played. Sports.com. More action available on BN Sports Connect tonight last as well. Friday. I think I might have one better for you. Oh, the ball slips through. That Flag happen. stays down. That can't Ruiz Woo! Woo! I mean, you can think about firing Clemson right there, the Right basketball. there. Right there. And yeah. Guatemala oh, is God. two up. Uh, Bomani, are you intrigued? Hey, man, I can't even lie to you. That's what we actually had given up. I don't think we want to go to the right, World right, Cup. Right, yes, right. I would like to be embarrassed yeah. of the world's <laughs> largest stage. Yeah, Brazil, that would not go well against Brazil. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm intrigued because I'm expecting a big comeback from Team USA. They're not losing to Guatemala. They're going to show the entire world that they can be Guatemala. Move on, buddy. That's it. That's it. They're on their way to the World Cup. <laughs> USA, 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 oh, USA, USA, USA. Eh? So what happened? You almost <laughs> broke the table there, buddy. I did. I love those old man sounds. Eh? <laughs> 
on PBS tonight, Secrets of the Dead. All right, the dead have secrets. Let's find out what the secrets are. On Secrets of the Dead, the most iconic prison escape in American history. It's one of these myths that go around for decades already. Now, a team of scientists wants to determine what really happened. But if your time went wrong, you'd just die of hypothermia over there, or sharks. Under identical conditions, they set out to recreate... Good luck, guys! ...the Alcatraz escape on Secrets of the Dead. Yeah, I'm always interested in anything Alcatraz-related. I don't know why that is. I mean, we've been doing this for how many years now, and every time I'll get sucked in. But, Monty, are you intrigued? Wait a minute. When the other guys did it, wasn't it a, let's say, an unhappy ending? And you're going to do the yeah. exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Way <laughs> yeah. to go, buddy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why they have secrets in their debt. Because they're not allowed, they're not alive anymore to tell you about the secrets. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, nobody knows for sure if these guys they die. Maybe they are living in Mexico drinking margaritas, you know, and uh, and laughing their, you know, what off. You know, I'm telling you something. These guys, they they were hell of a swimmers. You never know. You never know what happened to those guys. Yeah, they're making mixtapes of Tupac and waiting on Amelia Earhart to fly them out to Dubai. You got it, buddy. And who knows? Maybe one of them is here right now. Oh, really? Oh, look at that! Look at that dramatic monkey, man! He escaped from Alcatraz, and that's how he did it. Escaped <laughs> Bat from Alcatraz. Battling like that. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, back tomorrow at the same time. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. <laughs> That's you know how, how you get away from the sharks. <laughs> you know how long it took him to swim those miles in that cold water? <laughs> well, if you go like that, you get tired very quickly. Right, you you go like that, that's the right. difference. You this, get more mileage out of this. body moment. warm to swim like this. That's the secret. Uh.